Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is a day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made, and I'm so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day to always pour your heart out to Jesus. To always trust him at all times. And to always glorify, magnify, and exalt his holy name. Because he is king of kings. And he is Lord of lords. At the end of the day, Jesus is the only one that got your back. Jesus is the only one that's going to ride for you, my brothers and sisters, until the wheels fall off. You can count on him, you can depend on him, and you can rely on him. Because he's never too late, and he's never too early. But he will be on time. You can believe that, my sisters. You can believe that, my brothers. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters. That praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he has them come of his hands. And he is working everything out to his perfect will. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, to your life, or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our Father, we just come before you on this beautiful day, this awesome day. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you've done. We thank you, Father God, because this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Father God, because you make all things new, Father God. Oh, Father God, it's such a blessing today, such a, a blessing and a pleasure, Father God, just to be in your word right now today. Just to soak into your promises, Father God, because, Father God, you are everything, Father God. Father God, we are nothing without you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you're making the way out of no way, God, and that you will provide, Father God, and that you will come through, Father God, despite what it looked like, Father God. We know for a fact, Jesus, that you will come through, Father God. So, Father God, we just lift you up with thanksgiving and praise right now. We glorify, we magnify, we exalt your holy name, Father God, for who you is and what you have done and what about to take place right now. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for the love that you continue to give us. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for how patient you are us, God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now that's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, give me all things, give me all praise, give me all glory. Today is the day, Father God, that you have made. And Father God, we know that you're about to do something amazing in our life right now today. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for your, we thank you for who you are. And what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Father God, how you're preparing a table for us right now. We thank you, Father God, how you're setting the stages for us right now. Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Father God, let your words go out and should not return by board today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your time, this is your moment that I know for a fact that you're about to show up, that I know for a fact that you're about to show out. I believe and I declare and decree right now today in the mighty name of Jesus that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will. You should get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba Father. 
You are welcome right now. You are invited right now to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to lay hands on every last one of my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to lift their spirits up right now today, Father God. Father God, you know it's something bothering your sons right now. You know it's something bothering your daughters right now. And I'm just asking you, Father God, to speak to them right now. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, just to let them know that they ain't got to worry no more. They ain't got to stress out no more because it's already worked out. That it's already done. That it's already fixed. Hallelujah. That it's already solved, Father God, because there's nothing too hard for you. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to send my brother and sisters a sign today, Father God. Send them an angel right now. I'm praying, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for healing and restoration for my brothers and sisters, Father God. Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, just to just to do something new in their life right now today, Father God. Something new, Father God, that it will blow their mind if you should tell them right now today. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you for a favor. And the favor that I'm asking you for Jesus for a blessing for my brothers and sisters. A breakthrough for my brothers and sisters. A miracle for my brothers and sisters. For you to open up a door. For my brothers and sisters, that you put them at the right place at the right time for my brothers and sisters. That you would send them the help they need right now today for my brothers and sisters. And Father God, your word say that we can ask anything in your name, that it will be done. And right now, I claim, I declare right now that it's already done. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort, comfort us because you are confident. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our mind, so we hear your soft, still voice. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never know, moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sins today. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood blood right now. Clean us up as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters, and my body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, there's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and fruit of my lips about you, Jesus. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more, I want more, I want more of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. Enough. I just can't thank you 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 enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. 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 What an amazing God we serve and praise. Amen. Amen. Today's word is accountability. They say accountability is an area where women slack at the most. But I plead the fifth on that. Because it's not an area that a woman slack at. It's also an area where a man slack at as well. It's not this one gender that's slack in the area. No, it's not. It goes for a male and female that's slack in the area. They are afraid 
to fess up accountabilities for the wrong that they have done and the wrong that they have caused when they know they have messed up. They'll take off running. They'll hide from you. To make it seem like you was the one was the issue. Like you the one the problem, but the whole time it was them. And they know they messed up. That's why they can't face you. That's why they hide from you. That's why they run from you. That's why they avoid you. Because they cannot face up to what they did. They cannot face accountability. See, they was they was hard. They was hard and they was bad to the bone when they made a mistake. They was hard and they was bad to the bone when they thought they was all about themselves. But when they realized how bad they messed up, that's when they became a coward. Instead of them talking to you about the situation and facing you, they'll go to someone else and tell them how bad they messed up. They'll avoid you at all costs. They'll avoid you in all circumstances. They will avoid you in all situations so they cannot face you because they're not built the way how they say they built. They're not strong the way how they say that they're strong. They're not about their life the way that they say they're about their life. Now they became a coward. A coward is a person who runs from their accountability. A coward is someone that, that hides from their accountability. A coward is someone who's, who's avoids you from their accountability. And there's a lot of cowards out there. Which, which I mean it is, there's a lot of Judases out there. And your Judas has became a coward. It's not like that you're mad at your Judas. You already forgave your Judas. But your Judas is still a coward to the point of the fact that your Judas does not have the strength to face you. Your Judas does not have the brave man or the brave woman in their heart to face you to let you know how wrong they did. They will run like they have robbed somebody. They will run like they have murdered somebody. They will run like they have done something wrong, but they ain't did not, they ain't they have not robbed nobody, they ain't shot nobody, they ain't killed nobody, but they are wrong because they know they wrong the wrong person. It doesn't matter if they wrong someone just like them. They can face them, but they cannot face the person who knew, who know that was good to them, who they know didn't do nothing wrong to them. They'll run from that person. They'll hide from that person. They'll skip from that person. Just like Adam and Eve did. The moment they knew they disobeyed God, what's the first thing they do? They ran and they hid. Because why? They didn't want to face accountability. So when God questioned them, what's the first thing that Adam did? Adam snitched on Eve instead of facing accountability. Eve snitched on the serpent instead of facing accountability. They didn't want to face it. But what they do? They snitch on one another. They snitch on something instead of facing the fact and say, you know what, God? I messed up. God, that was my that was my responsibility. That was my fault, God. Adam, you was the man, you was the head, you was the leader. You should have faced up to God and told God what you did. But what did Adam did? He flipped the strip and snitched on Eve because why he didn't want to face accountability Eve she knew what she did instead of her woman up about the situation and say I the one who did it but she flipped the strip and snitched on the serpent the serpent didn't put no gun to her head the serpent didn't have no knife to her back so automatically she should have went faced up and face accountability for what she did, but she didn't. She ended up telling God that the serpent made her do it. No. You should have faced your accountability. It's like Judas, when he realized what he did. Instead of him going to the person who he did wrong to, he went back to the Pharisees. 
Like the Pharisees is going to help him. Like the Pharisees going to have his back. Like the Pharisees understood what he did. The Pharisees already knew that Judas was not about that life. That's why they said, we don't want that blood in our hand. That's your problem. What you telling us for? You need to go talk to the man who you flipped on. You need to go talk to Jesus who you betrayed. That's who you need to face. But Jesus was such a, such a coward that he could not face accountability because why? He was ashamed for what he did, what he did to Jesus. Your Judas is still ashamed for what they did to you, my sisters. Your Judas is still ashamed for what they did to you, my brothers. Your Judas is still a shame. They will avoid you. They will hide from you. They will run from you. They will block you from phone calls. They will block you from all social media platforms just because they still feeling guilty for what they done. They know they betrayed you. They know they did you wrong. But they putting on a show for somebody. But deep down in their heart, deep down in their spirit, that they conscious is still bothering them right now to this day. Deep down in their heart, deep down in their spirit, deep down in their soul, that they conscious is still eating them up for the wrong that they did to you. But at some point, they're going to have to face you. I can't tell you when, my sisters. I can't tell you when, my brothers. But they conscious is eating them up. Their conscience is bothering them because God is reminding them every single day. You know what you did, right? When are you going to face accountability and face my son? When are you going to face accountability and face my daughter? They're already forgiving you. But when are you going to do your part? So every day he's pounding on them. Hey, what you going to do? You know what you did, right? You might think I forgot about it. But God said, I ain't forgot about nothing. I know what you did. And he's giving them a daily reminder every day. Some, have, some get to the point, they move to a different state just to avoid you. God said, no matter where, where they move to, he said, they can move to where E.T. at. I still know where they at. And I'm still going to remind them for what they did. So they still got to face accountability at some point. Judas. When are you going to stop being a coward and face up to your problems? You know what? I messed up. Are you going to be a coward for the rest of your life? Are you going to be a chicken for the rest of your life? Are you going to man up about it? Are you going to woman up about it? Because at some point, they going whoever that you're rocking with, they're going to realize that you are Judas at some point. They're going to realize that you messed up. They're going to realize that you were saying your story is not added up because you don't told this story to this person. You don't told this story to this person. You don't told this story to that person. And every time you tell a story, your story is not adding up as you have told every individual. And at some point, everybody's going to come together and say, well, he said this, she said that. And when they put their heads together, they're going to say, you know what? Something ain't right about this story. It ain't adding up. Then they're going to point the finger at you and say, you know what? The problem is you. It's not who you say was the problem. The problem is you. So when you point a finger at somebody, you better point three back at yourself. Right now, you might as well go ahead and point those three fingers at yourself right now today. So you can face accountability and tell yourself that you was wrong. That you was out of line, that you was out of pocket. There's no need for you to continue to carry on this cowardice and it's being a chicken. Face accountability and admit that you were wrong. Just get it on over with. You'll feel better, my sisters. You'll feel better, my brothers, if you go ahead and admit to what you did wrong. Get it out of the way because it's eating you up. And you know who it is. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this works for today. But God is reminding you right now today. Are you going to face accountability today? Are you going to man up today? Are you going to woman up today? Because I'm going to continue to remind you for what you did. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. That's Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. 
they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I betrayed innocent blood. See, right now, Judas already realized what he did. Yo, Judas, my sister, yo, Judas, my brother, they been realized what they did. They know they sinned against you. They know they messed up. They know they betrayed you. They know they did you wrong. They know they did you dirty. So they know this. So it's not like they don't know. They already know. They know. And right now it's eating them up every single day because they've been reminded for what they did to you. They're not sleeping well because the Bible said the wicked should get no rest at all. So they're not sleeping good. They're not eating good. And they sure not doing good. You can count on that. Believe that, my brothers and sisters. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself because why? He could not face accountability. He couldn't face the person who he did wrong. Right now, your Judas can't face you, my sisters. Right now, my brothers, your Judas can't face you because they know the one who they did wrong, they wish they can take it back. And they don't know what to do. So what they're going to continue to do is run. They're going to continue to do is hide. They're going to continue to do is not face you because they know they can't face accountability. They can't face you at this point. And I don't know when, when, when they'll be able to face you. But right now, they're still on the run right now. They're still hiding from you right now. They can't face you. They can face anyone else. But it's something about you particularly, my sisters and brothers. Who they can't face. They did you wrong. They can put on a show. Pretend like they hard and about their life. But they cannot face accountability. Not knowing that you already have forgiven them. It's like Jesus has already forgiven Judas. Because if you look at it. Jesus said from the beginning. One of y'all going to betray me. So Jesus was already up on game. Who was going to betray him. So he already knew that it was Judas. He already knew in his heart and his spirit that he was going to he was going to forgive Judas, but Judas cannot face accountability. So Judas ran, and he done this up in. Your Judas is still on the run. Your Judas is still hiding. Your Judas is still being a chicken. Your Judas is still being a coward because they can't face you for what the wrong that they have done to you. The point I'm making right now. I don't know when. But at some point, your Judas will have to face you. And I don't know who this word is for today. But this word is for you today. Are you ready to face accountability? Do you know who you are? You ain't got to admit anything to me. But you got to make it right to the person that who you did wrong to. And if this word moved through today, maybe touch your spirit today. Go on, hit Jesus' like button if you like. Hit the subscribe button too if you like to as well. Could you please... Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfect of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm seven minutes LT. I love every last one of y'all. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed day today. And always keep Jesus first place. Amen.